I'm Jonathan Hunt, and this is On The Hunt. Terrible Games prides itself on making games that are, quote, thought-provoking and fun. But they are also controversial. Their first board game, War on Terror, has been banned from toy fairs and was once even confiscated from a climate change protest after being deemed a weapon. Their latest game, The Hen Commandments, takes on religion. It's all created, of course, by those dastardly Brits. And joining me now from London is Terrible Games designer and co-founder Andrew Sheeran. Welcome, Andrew. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Thank you very much for having me. All right, so let's get to where it starts in your mind. Why do you make these games with such uh, sensitive, I guess is the best word, subject matters? Well, actually, um, and I didn't know this when we started, but we're part of quite a long tradition of games, board games, being used to uh, analyse the world around us. So, for example, you might not know that Monopoly has its origins in a in an anti-capitalist game. It was designed by a mm. woman um, back in the early 1900s. So um, I d games are just a really good medium for uh, testing, testing out the world and, and playing with each other and engaging with each other. But War, war on Terror, for instance, seems a, a little more uh, controversial than Monopoly uh, as an anti-capitalist game. Even, even if, you, if you, accepting your premise, uh, you take it that one or two steps further. Well, War on Terror, the board game, was born out of desperation, really. We had, um, we had nothing else we could do. We had a million, two million people had marched on the streets voicing their objection to the war. And when it gets to that point and no one's listening to you, what else can you do? It, it, it was already a large game being played out at, uh, at a much higher level, and we just took that and turned it into a board game. Hmm. Uh, so what, what goes into the thought process of designing the games themselves? Well, we start out um, with a subject that we want to look at, and we identify who the protagonists are, um, what their motivations are, what they want, um, what their drivers are, what the conflicts are, and then we try and translate that into a game dynamic so that when people play our games, they're not just being fed a message that we want to tell them. They actually, it's really role playing in a way. They get into a role and they have to make the decisions that we lay out for them. And then they learn through whatever decisions they make. For example, in, in the war on terror, um, you can fund terrorism to weaken your enemies, even though everyone's fighting terrorism. It's up to you if you want to. It's a very cheap and easy tool to weaken your enemy or an enemy of someone's enemy. But of course, once you do that, you make things a lot worse, not just for everyone around the table, mm. but for yourself as well, eventually. But people still go there. People still make so, that move. So, Andrew, you're, you're not necessarily trying to provoke people for the sake of provoking them? or You're, you're trying to get a no. thought process going? What, what, what's your motivation here, other than sales, obviously? I, I well, actually, no, I mean, People, th people think it's, it's profiteering at its kind of uh, uh, worst level, or at least that's what we were accused of when War on Terror came out. But we were designing War on Terror for two years before we even thought of making it into a product. Uh, that was really an afterthought. Um, obviously, I'm not stupid. I know the games are provocative, but that also isn't our primary aim, because if you just provoke for no reason, then it's, it's, it's meaningless. Um, the only reason our games are provocative is because, one, not many people are doing this with board games, and two, the subjects themselves have got something about them that isn't being discussed openly or honestly enough, and that's what, that's what shocks people. So, so you, you would say things. that this provokes open and honest discussion? Because it obviously also does, uh, as you would admit, offend people as well. Yeah, sure. I know I've got... I, I know it's... We, we've been sent... Uh, quite heart-wrenching letters from people who have been offended. Mm. Um, I know that you can hardly do anything in this world without offending someone. That is almost a given. And unfortunately, no one is kind of guaranteed to be free from offence. Mm. What's interesting is that the most upset people have always got in contact with us 
after some kind of sensationalist story in a tabloid somewhere that has misrepresented. You're suggesting uh, what, there happened. are tabloids in Britain that misrepresent the news? My word, I'm shocked and horrified. Um, I, got, I got to get moving, Andrew, but uh, so just before we go, tell me about the new game, Hen Commandments. Okay, well, the Hen Commandments, look, I've, I've actually got, there it is, it's the Hen Commandments. It's, it is about religion, but it's about a very specific religion, a new religion based on the worship of a holy chicken. And in it, <laughs> players are disciples of this holy chicken. And the holy chicken is laying secret commandments on a series of eggs, and you have to decide what it means, and then convince all the other disciples that your reading is the, is the correct one. And you do this ten times, you get ten commandments, and the, the best disciple gets a copy of all of those to go and start their own sect of Hellenism. <laughs> Well, it sounds fascinating, and I have to say I tend to agree with you that you're doing anything these days, you're always going to offend somebody. Um, it sounds like it's well worth taking a look at. Andrew Sheeran, uh, thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you. All right, okay, and thank you all for watching. For foxnews.com, I'm Jonathan Hunt.